Hello, and welcome to Socialism, the weekly Marxist analysis podcast from the Socialist Party. Following another International Climate Strikes Day of Action, the Socialist Party and Socialist students are calling for a discussion on the way forward for this movement. As part of this, we've raised the idea of establishing school student unions to allow democratic discussion on ideas and strategy. Make sure you also check out episodes 19 and 20 of the podcast for some further discussion on the Socialist Party's approach to this issue in the current movement. Now, over to Sarah Rack. I'm here today with Theo Sharif, who is the National Organiser of Socialist Students. And this is the third episode of the podcast, actually, that is going to be related to the climate strike protests that have been taking place, uh, both in Britain and internationally, um, over the last few months. So, hi Theo. Hello. And to start with, if you want to just give us a picture of why has socialist students been taking part in these protests? And also, what kind of ideas have you been raising uh, when you're doing that? Yeah, well, because it's, you know, obviously it's a fantastic new movement and we've been wanting to support it, build it from the very start, because climate change is an extremely uh, serious threat. At the end of last year, the UN IPCC published a report that got a lot of media coverage that uh, published, you know, what uh, is potentially going to happen because of climate change or what is happening because of climate change. They spoke about things like uh, climate related poverty, food and water shortages, wildfires, wildfires in Europe already this year. And there's been a lot of them. There's been 480 across uh, Europe this year. Compared to the yearly average between 2008 and 2018, there were only 21 wildfires across the continent by this point in the year. So it's been this fantastic new movement, young people responding to it, but also it comes at a similar time where reports have also been published that have found that since 1988, only 100 companies have been responsible for around 71% of greenhouse, all greenhouse emissions, which, you know, is a disgrace. And we think it's been reflected on these marches. Students have been speaking about the role that big business, that the capitalist class has played in leading us to this, frankly, catastrophic uh, situation. And lots of, in terms of what we've been saying, what we've been raising, lots of young people have been raising the idea that we can't just rely on individual actions like turning off the taps when we're brushing our teeth, not using plastics, but it has to be system change that a lot of people are discussing. And in Socialist Students and the Socialist Party, we couldn't agree more with that. But we want to raise the idea and we want to discuss what kind of system change is it that we need. And we say that it's socialist change, we need a socialist alternative to capitalism to fight against climate change. And in essence, what that means is taking these companies, those big 100 multinationals, the big polluters, but also the banks, the resources in society, taking them out of the control of uh, uh, the capitalist class and putting them into our control, the control, the democratic control and management of the uh, uh, working class. And it's on that basis that we can halt climate change, we can halt uh, greenhouse emissions, but we can also invest in what we need. We can also invest in what the planet needs, green technologies, renewable energies, so on uh, and so forth. But another idea that we've also been raising, and I think when we've raised it on the marches, it's been very, very popular. We've been wanting to discuss how do we achieve this level of unprecedented change? Because one of the main things that a lot of young people have been discussing is that in this UN IPCC report, they said that we've only got 12 years to make like unprecedented changes. And we want to discuss how we do that. And we think that what we have so far with the student mobilisations is a fantastic start to building a movement to end climate change. We want to take it further. And we want to actually mobilise the working class majority in society. Groups like Extinction Rebellion, the Climate Strike Network, for example, have raised the idea of like shutting down roads like blocking up traffic, blocking bridges in central London. Um, and we agree with that, but we want to take it further. We don't want to just shut down a handful of roads, for example, in central London, but we want to you know, shut down the country, the transport networks, the schools and colleges themselves, get the teachers out protesting as well. We want to shut down the um, workplaces. And that's why we think you know, we want to mobilise the working class majority through strike actions to achieve these uh, uh, changes uh, that we need, the socialist change um, that we need. Yeah, and this is kind of what we wanted to discuss on today's podcast a bit, isn't it, is what um, what the movement should be doing and ideas we're putting forward uh, as kind of for, sh- for the strategy. 
because what we've seen so far is uh, kind of monthly days of action. So we had the 15th of March uh, day of action just taking place, which was um, really uh, inspirational. And the next one's then coming up on the 12th of April, International Day of Action. And sometimes when you have that kind of, uh, you know, regular protest going on and on, they can dwindle in size. But we think it's possible for them to actually build in size, isn't it? And yeah. to, to uh, grow in, in strength, but depending on what strategy is adopted um, by the movement uh, to build it. So what is socialist students saying should happen between now and the next International Day of Action on the, the 12th of April? Well, I mean, firstly, we want to, you know, we want to take this campaign directly to the schools and colleges. So that means we want to organise meetings of students in order to discuss how we actually, like you say, bring more people out from the schools and colleges themselves, firstly, on April 12th. But at the same time as well, we don't want to just, I mean, it's very important that we build, that we, you know, we uh, advertise as wide as possible. We get students organised to walk out on April 12th. But we don't want to just wait for April 12th. We want to do more actions between now and then as well. So things like uh, lunchtime protests, sit-down protests in the school, uh, schools and colleges, protests outside the school gates, for example, in the run-up to a April 12th. So that sort of would help build the momentum. And as socialist students, we want to provide a forum, you know, for discussing not only the ideas we think we need to fight for, the demands that we need to put central to this movement, why we think you know, it's necessary why we need to fight for a socialist alternative to capitalism to end climate change. But we also want to be a place where students can get organised. We want to be a place where students can get together, can discuss how they best advertise these walkouts, get others signed up to walk out on April 12th uh, as well. That's what we want to build. But also, yeah, we want to ask ourselves, you know, how do we, how do we escalate the struggle? Not only how do we get more people out, but how do we actually escalate it? And we want to discuss how we focus on pulling in broader layers into this movement, the working class majority um, in society. And I'd say it's actually a very, very popular idea. So socialist students, we did it on February 15th, but on March 15th, um, just gone, we did it as well. We had an open mic and we, you know, we made a bit of an appeal to the crowd. We had hundreds of students listening to speeches that socialist students were given, giving, but also uh, school and college students also uh, got up and spoke. They addressed each other how they'd built for the walkouts at their schools, what they wanted to see happen um, in the movement. But you know, we made an appeal. We said, you know, leave your leave your details with us. Sign up to socialist students, and you know, we can put you in touch with perhaps local trade unions, local trades councils, and we can help you. You know, organise local student worker demonstrations, for example, on April twelfth, and that got a big, big cheer. That was a massively popular idea, I'd say on these marches and it's because the students are they're serious these are really really serious people and they're they're thinking about they're they're happy with what they've built so far but they're serious about escalating it and taking it further because they take they understand that climate change is a really uh, serious uh, issue so that's what we're um trying to organize you know why not why don't student groups locally write to local trades councils and ask to put on a public meeting that could get students and lo the local community, local workers in the same room, but also appeal to uh, build for local demonstrations of students and workers in local areas uh, uh, on April 12th. Trade unions could help with organising them, where they could offer assistance with stewarding local demonstrations to keep things organised and safe. And, you know, we realise that perhaps, you know, school and college students might not have tons of experience or... Uh, necessarily be in touch with the trade union movement locally, but we are, and that's why we want to offer assistance uh, in doing that and, and make that appeal. And one of the ideas that socialist students has raised is um, the idea of establishing school student union structures. Um, and I suppose that is a way, isn't it, of uh, allowing that discussion that you outlined is taking place on the protests, on the open mics and stuff, where people want to be discussing ideas, sharing experiences and so on. It's a way of um, allowing that to be an ongoing process that can build the movement in between the, the protests um, as well. But I suppose some people might think that one of the big strengths of the protests has been the almost kind of spontaneous nature of them, which obviously there is, uh, that, that is quite inspiring to see, isn't it? Is young people just deciding that they're going to come out, having their own placards and kind of doing it for themselves. So why is it that we're then raising the idea of 
formal structures like school student unions. Yeah, so I mean, it's like you said, it's it's understandable um, that, you know, a lot of people will be attracted to this movement because of its spontaneity, like the idea of direct actions just all coming out, uh, uh, blocking roads, blocking bridges, so on and so forth. That has attracted a lot of young people to these protests. But I think what we have to do is we have to, as a movement, we have to honestly assess, you know, what are the obstacles that we are encountering so far to growing this movement? And from that, how do we overcome those obstacles? And one of those obstacles that a lot of students have spoken about, again, on our, we've referenced it before on our open mics, but it got a lot of media coverage I saw this time around. Lots of students have been threatened with punishments, with detentions, exclusions. I saw somewhere that parents were threatened with fines for allowing their kids to go on these uh, protests. You know, we think that's a disgrace. Espe- you know, especially considering that climate change is such a serious issue. And when you've got students looking to get organised and to fight against climate change. But, you know, fundamentally, we say it, it amounts to an attack on the democratic right to organise, the, the, the right to protest. And we want to fight um, against that. And we want to help students um, get organised and, uh, if necessary, defend their right to protest. And we think students' unions would be an indispensable tool in that, that battle. It would allow students not only, if they establish a students' union, in uh, their uh, school and college, it would not only allow them to, uh, in an organised fashion, you know, go to their friends, go to people they don't know in the school and uh, sign them up, get them organised. It would allow them to link up with other schools and colleges, perhaps, in building for the uh, uh, walkouts. But it would allow a forum, an organisation where students can come together and they can, you know, discuss how they can actually concretely defend their right to protest. For example, if some of them are put in detention for uh, attending these walkouts, a student's union could meet to discuss that and organise a local protest outside the... Either in the school, maybe, they could do a sit-down protest, like I said before, or they could do a protest outside uh, the school and college gate and make the management in the schools, force them to actually discuss with them uh, and to listen to them saying, you know, uh, we want to defend our right to protest, we take these issues seriously. And it's not just on this issue and for this movement that that type of structure could be useful as well, isn't it? So other than climate change uh, and and the related issues to this movement, what kind of issues do you think um, a school student union could, could take up? Yeah, and it, 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 I think that's a good question. And also it's because it hasn't just been, there's been all sorts of issues raised in the movement, I mean, just firstly, that just the level of anger at the Tory government, I mean, on the issue of climate change, the fact that they haven't acted, they're seen as incompetent, you know, and we would say that it's not just that the Tories are incompetent, but they're the government, they're the party politically that represents the interests of the big businesses, those 100 companies who have contributed towards uh, climate change. And we say that we we want a place central uh, to the movement, the demand that the Tory government should be kicked out, because they're never going to act against the interests of the rich. They exist to protect the interests of the big businesses which are contributing overwhelmingly to climate change. So yeah, in in the movement, people have spoken out, talking about wanting to get rid of the um, Tories. But on our open mics, people have spoken about austerity in uh, education. We think this is a massive, massive issue, you know, and it's an issue that socialist students, the Socialist Party, have been campaigning uh, tirelessly on Uh, for years, it's a really, really dire situation, the level of cuts. I was speaking at a meeting last night and one person at the meeting uh, who'd been out actually campaigning on uh, climate change had spoken to one student locally who had just come out of a maths lesson who uh, was frustrated because they'd been forced to take the maths lesson without things like protractors, compasses, all the equipment that you need in order to uh, learn. So these are cuts, this is austerity in education, which is risking uh, our futures, which is throwing away our futures. This isn't to mention other things that students have referenced. The massive pressure on students nowadays to perform in schools. They talk about schools and colleges are turned now, they're like uh, exam factories. And also austerity cuts um, affecting the teachers, the staff that run our schools, you know, cuts and attacks on living conditions, so on and so forth. So this is a whole host of issues that we think students' unions could uh, campaign on, but not just on their own, you know, that they should campaign, but they could link up with the teachers' unions in their schools, the National Education Union, locally in their schools, for example, to campaign against austerity and cuts um, in education. But other things as well. So one of the main things that um, has come out of the climate movement so far is the idea that the national curriculum should be altered, 
that it should be changed to uh, so that students can learn and be taught honestly and openly about it, like environmental studies, what the situation with climate change uh, currently um, is. Students' unions could campaign on that, for example. Why not campaign if you've got a students' union officially recognised in your school? That students' union could then uh, campaign to sit on the Board of Governors, for example, next to representatives from the trade unions, parents, representatives from the uh, uh, local um, community. So there's just there's all sorts of issues that these students' unions could be uh, campaigning on. And just to finish as well, it wouldn't just have to be in the schools. I mean, there's all sorts of things which... Uh, are affecting the you know the lives of young people and it's a result of Tory capitalist driven austerity the housing crisis but also austerity from local councils you know cuts to youth services cuts to career services if even a handful of students unions were established in one area or nationally they could campaign on these issues and it would be a big boosting effect I think in helping students uh, to get organized. And when um, we're raising these ideas we're kind of taking into account um, some international examples, aren't we, where um, there are very clear examples of student unions being a big asset for school students and, and their ability to organise. Yeah, and, and, and like, it's because it's an international movement as well. So like on March 15th, there was, I think it was over 100 countries where, uh, where you had students come out. But, um, you know, one of the main countries that, you know, we uh, have highlighted in our material, we look towards is uh, in the Spanish state, where they've had uh, school students unions, uh, the Sindicato de Estudiantes has been established or they've been building it since the 80s. It's now established, I, I think, in you know, hundreds of schools across uh, the Spanish state. In Spain, it's legal. If you're 13, you have the legal right to go on strike. Now, we think that, you know, we think no matter what age you are, you should have the legal right to uh, go on strike. But, you know, we, we would say that demonstrates what it's possible to win on the basis of these school students unions, on the basis of being um, organised. On International Women's Day, for example, on 8th of March, just gone, these school students unions managed to organise two and a half million students um, on strike, young women, but men also taking a stand, going on strike, fighting against sexism in the Spanish education system, in the law courts, so on and so forth. But significantly, what uh, the leadership of the uh, Sindicato de Estudiantes managed to do was to use their position to put pressure on the leadership of the trade unions, both in local areas but nationally also. And it was estimated that on International Women's Day, you had not only hundreds of thousands of school and college students out in the streets, but you had an estimated 7 million workers out. Now, of course, that is after, in Spain, they've been building these students' unions for decades and, you know, we're, we're only starting to build them here in Britain now, but that is what we are aiming for. That is what we want to use these school students unions uh, for, not only to help students to organise uh, themselves, but to appeal, to use them as a tool to, you know, build a bit of a, you know, a broader movement, which involves uh, the working class majority as well. So if someone's listening to this podcast and agreeing with everything you say and thinking, you know, that example from Spain sounds fantastic and wants to um, start building that here, uh, what do you think should be someone's first steps in trying to um, set up a student union in their school or to, you know, for socialist students, organisers to help school students in, in doing that um, as well? Yeah, I think, I mean, the first step is to actually just call a meeting in your school or college, either in the school itself or maybe in a local cafe um, after school to discuss this topic, what a student's union is why we um, need one. Uh, socialist students in your area would be more than happy to help you assist that in terms of like providing perhaps leaflets, material for advertising, those meetings, offering assistance with actually leafleting the schools, providing sign-up sheets, uh, so on and so forth. And I think firstly, uh, organising a meeting, seeing who you get along, but it doesn't have to be, you know, I think when we talk about establishing a students' union, it can sound a little bit scary, it can sound a bit like oh my God, that's going to be like a ton of work. But the way I would look at it is why not, you know, see who you get along and maybe at that first meeting discuss a student's union locally in your school and why not take a vote there and then to establish to establish yourselves, announce yourselves. One idea is perhaps you could take a vote on a brief launch statement that someone could draft explaining why you're establishing the student's union to defend your right to protest, to get organised. Um, for the climate strikes, but on other issues that we've outlined um, as well. Take a vote on that, you know, on that launch statement 
And then that launch statement could like be circulated around your friends in the school or college. It can be circulated around other schools as well. You can make uh, you can make a bit of a big deal about of it. And uh, uh, also, you know, going around your mates with sign up sheets. We're looking to socialist students is looking to produce uh, students union um, join cards that people can go around their friends with as well to sign people up. And we would say even even one or two students unions in your local area, that would be a massive, massive step forward in terms of planning uh, walkouts for April 12th. And it could form the basis of a new national campaign to establish these school students unions. OK, thanks very much, Theo, and good luck with all of uh, this organising. Thank you. Many of the resources Theo mentioned will be available at socialstudents.org.uk and you can find other related material at socialistparty.org.uk forward slash podcast if you agree with what you've just heard we want you to get involved you can get in touch to come along to a meeting or activity or to meet a local organizer find out more by leaving your details at socialistparty.org.uk forward slash join and don't forget to help us get the podcast out to more people by clicking subscribe in your podcast app and leaving us a five-star review